Hey, parents of fourth and fifth graders, Craig Ahrens here, teacher at Chester T and the school-wide math coach. Uh, we just want to go ahead and kind of show you some strategies for what your students are going to be doing with division because it does look a little bit different than the way that you were taught when you were in school. I want to start off by saying math that we do today is not what everybody would consider to be new math. It's actually the same thing, just being taught through different strategies and different practices so that students can tie themselves to number sense. And again, number sense is a way that students are able to pick up on strategies and relationships between numbers and place values. So if you're, you do have a student in fourth and fifth grade, which I would assume you do since you're watching this, uh, when we do division now, we're actually trying to steer away from what's called the standard algorithm. Standard algorithm is the way you and I were taught when we were in school. And if you were to look at it, we'll just throw a problem here on my whiteboard, and I'll say that we have 12 here, and we have 14, 147. That looks like a good number. The way we were taught is we would say, well, 12 cannot go into 1, and 12 cannot go into, or 12 can go into 14, and it would go one time. The problem with this is, is we're not teaching kids relationships and patterns with place value. What we're saying is that 12 can go into 14 one time, but we're not dividing into 14. We're actually dividing into 147. And where that 1 winds up is not in the 1's place. It actually winds up in the 10's place. So if you really think about what we're doing, we're telling kids that 12 goes into 147 actually 10 times is what we're saying. So just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going, we're going to use the same numbers, and I'm going to show you what the partial product, sorry, partial quotient strategy would look like. We still have our divisor. We still have our dividend. And then out here, we're going to create a little column where students and, and teachers and parents can go ahead and kind of work through the process. So now what we're going to ask is actually, can 12 go into 147? Or a better way to ask that is, can we make... 12, can we take 147 and split it into groups of 12, and if so, how many? So what we ask our kids to do is to use friendly numbers. Friendly numbers are it's very simple. It's numbers that you can count with real easy and things that you don't have to think about. For example, multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. Multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40. Multiples of 100 or 1,000. Because these are numbers that kids are used to, and they, believe it or not, even at the youngest level, can count by 100s because it's such an easy thing to count by. So these are what we call our friendly numbers. And my handwriting is terrible, I apologize for that, but you get the idea. Friendly numbers. So can 12 go into 147? Can we make groups of 12 out of 147? And the answer is absolutely yes. We can make at least 10 groups. We're not saying it's going to be perfect, but we're saying we can get at least 10 groups. And we can do 10 times 12, giving us 120. As you can see already, that's different than the way you and I were taught. But what it's doing is it's building a sense of place value, and it's building a sense of number sense, because we're not saying it goes in one time. We're saying it goes in 10 times. So we do our subtraction. 0 from 7 is 7, and 2 from 4 is 2. So we're left with 27. What we're teaching kids is 27 cannot be the remainder because it's greater than 12, which really means we can make more groups of 12 out of that 27. The question is, how many? Well, we ask the kids, is it going to be 10 times? And they're going to say no because that gives us 120. So we're going to drop to 5 and say, can we get 5 groups? And the idea is that students see, nope, it's 60, which is quite a distance from 27. So maybe they're going to try 3. And they see, all right, I'm getting a little closer. And it gets them to the point where they can say it's only going to be 2 more can fit into each group without going over the allotted amount. So we're 2. That's 24 with 3. And now we ask ourselves, can our remainder be 3? And again, what we're teaching our kids is yes, because we cannot put any more into groups of 12 evenly. So what we would do is we would take what we call 
partial quotients, which is the answer to a division problem, of 10 plus 2. And if you have 1 10 and 2 1s, that gives us 12 with 3 left over. So we write it as 12 remainder 3. And actually, the better way that we would want kids in 4th and 5th grade to write it would be 12 and 3 twelfths. And the reason we want them writing it as a fraction is because if you think about what a remainder is, a remainder is a fraction of the whole or a piece of the whole. So yes, parents, does that look completely different? Sure. Might it cause you a little bit of a headache and a struggle kind of in the beginning wrapping your brain around it? It does, but what we have seen is that kids are grasping onto this because they are able to make their connections to patterns and relationships of digits and place value and how that all works together. I hope that that was able to kind of give you an insight into what partial quotients is. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email me, carons at forsyth.k12.ga.us, and I hope you have a great day.